get into the word of God today. Amen. Amen. I am very excited to share this word. You know, one of the things from the beginning of God's established plan, this is not a God's somehow God God came up with this with this uh, idea all of a sudden but it is an established plan of God you know uh, with God there are no accidents he's the God of yesterday today and forever he's the God uh, who was and is and is to come so um, his plans are well established even before we existed even before we came into existence, his plans are well established. Even before any human intelligence have come into play, God's plans have been well established. So what God always was trying to uh, get us to do and follow is his system. He has created them. He has put those things in place so we can fully enjoy or fully reap the benefits of how God has created us to be. When you can be fully you, your full potential, your full capacity, your full ministry, that, that's the best of you. You know, many times I have seen, I have come across many people, some people that are uh, young, some people that are old. It didn't matter well, whom I met, most of them would have regrets about their life. Most of the times, it is because they are not able to go to the fullness of their life, fullness of their potential. They always found themselves, I didn't finish this. I didn't complete this. There is still some kind of a, a flaw, some kind of a missing piece here, or something uh, didn't go fully as I wanted. One of the reasons, one of the main reasons for it is that we did not choose to do it God's way. One of the main reasons is that we have to choose to do it God's way. When we are doing it God's way, the byproduct, call it side effect, is fulfillment. Satisfaction. Satisfaction. We do not see satisfaction elsewhere. You know, any, anywhere else, we don't, we, we don't get satisfied. It's always, okay, I need to figure this out. I need to do this. I need to do that. But the true satisfaction comes to us when we can do what God has called us, prepared us, established us to do. One of the principles that I would like for us to go after is one of the things that he has established that is needed for us to run on this earth. You know, many times we, we, we uh, uh, compartmentalize our life, the church life, our regular life, the spiritual life, our day-to-day -day life, our family life, our financial life, our job, all these compartments we create. But that is not how God wants us to l uh, lead our life, but instead he wants all things to be done his way. We bring him into anything and everything into our lives. By that, what I mean is if he is telling us a principle, if he is giving us a, 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 a line to go by or a commandment to go by, by that, what he is saying is this commandment, if you obey this commandment, if you follow this principle, if you, if you lean on to these, these precepts of mine, what it does to you is it is going to affect you in every area of your life. It is going to bring you the good results that you need in every area of your life, not just at church. Not just when you are feeling good. He wants things to be working for you continually, constantly. Remember, whether you, do you believe God has a plan to establish you? God is in the business of establishing us. He never is in the business of confusing us. He never wants us to live in a state of confusion. Rather, he wants us to live in a state of confidence and establishment. That's his plan. He wants to establish us. That from the beginning, from the Garden of Eden, or whether it is Noah's life, or whether it is with King David, the plan with him is always to establish. 
establish. Establish. He wants us to be rooted and grounded and immovable. But we can only attain that by us following his principles. Nobody ever thought, everybody who, ha who is uh, uh, 50 years or older can tell this thing. Nobody ever thought Sears would be going out of business. Because that was it. America run, ran on Sears. That was it. But now it has become history. The reason is this, as simple as this. The establishment doesn't come from human effort, but from God. But the God's word is still true. How many people try to destroy Christianity? How many people try to destroy Jews? In spite of every effort, everything that has happened, but God's promise continued to triumph all those things. So there is only one true power that can truly establish us. That is God's word. That is God's will. Only God can do that in our lives. So anytime when we are looking at God's principles in our lives, anytime when, God is, God, when we are looking at God's word in our lives, I want us to look at it as with also with this idea, with this mindset, this is something that is going to establish me. This is something that is going to make me stronger. This is something that is going to give me roots. Not just flaying away, not being somebody distressed, going back and forth, but somebody who can stand and withstand. Having done all, the Bible says, withstand, stand. You know, we know the story of the, 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 the parable that Jesus talks about, one who built the house on the rock and the one who built on, the, uh, on sand. You know, many times we, we, uh, we think building the house on the rock is, is something that they dug the foundation so deep and they dug their things so deep, that's why the house stood. But the parable is not that. The parable talks about this thing, simple thing. What it talks about is the man who does the word of God is like unto this person. The word offers you that foundation already. The foundation that you can attain when you dig the foundation deeper on a rock and build your house is already provided for you if you are the doer of the word. If you obey God's commandments, if you do what God's word is telling you to do, that already gives you that power, that balance, that support, that it can withstand. Bible says the wind blew, the rain came, but the building withstood. It's because its foundation is not a man-made foundation, but the foundation that had laid the foundation for this whole creation. The Word of God. Amen? That is what I want us to see when we see the Word of God. It, they have good stories in there. There are good principles in there. But above everything, it has something that can establish me. I will establish your way. So any precept, any concept that God is trying to present to us, there is something in within that word that is to establish us. The same idea, the same eye I want us to keep in mind as we go through this thing today. Go with me to the book of Genesis, fourth chapter, starting from verse 1. Genesis, fourth chapter, starting from verse 1. This is right after Adam and Eve were kicked out of the Garden of Eden. Now Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bore Cain and said, I have acquired a man from the Lord. Then she bore again, this time his brother Abel. Now Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought an offering of the fruit of the ground to the Lord. Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock and of their fat. And the Lord respected Abel and his offering. But he did not respect Cain and his offering. And Cain was very angry. 
and his countenance fell. And the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry? And why has your countenance fallen? Look at this thing. God knows when we are sad. God knows when we are upset. He understands what all we are going through. He, rela- he, he knows it exactly. If you let him do it, he will encourage you through everything. He will guide you through everything. It doesn't matter what kind of a situation, whether it is a horrible situation or whether it is a depressing situation. It doesn't matter. He is willing to walk us through all those things. And there he does this thing. If you do, uh, 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 if you do well, will, not, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin lies at the door. And its desire is for you. But you should rule over it. This is a powerful, powerful statement about sin. In within this statement. Here there is, you know, it says, and, and if you do not do well, sin lies at the door. And its desire is for you. And then God gives a commandment, but you should rule over it. Who is going to rule over the sin? Not God. You should rule over it. You have the power. You have the empowerment to rule over sin. But I'm not going in that direction. Then, now Cain talked with Abel, his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and killed him. First ever recorded murder. A brother killing brother. Then the Lord said to Cain, now look at this, where is Abel, your brother? You think God doesn't know what has happened? He surely does. He knows what has happened. But he is bringing this man to a point of conviction. A realization what he has done. What he did was not not to an enemy, but to his brother. His own brother. He did it to his own brother. Where is Abel, your brother? He said, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? Am I my brother's keeper? And he said, what have you done? The voice of your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. The voice of your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. Brothers, a brotherly blood, a brotherly covenant. This is what I want to talk about today. A brotherly covenant, how important it is for God, for us to maintain that brotherly covenant. In God's plan, in God's design, this is very important for God because the next chapter, when you look at it, if you read the remaining part of this story, you will see God driving Abel away. Not because he have done something wrong, but because he have done something wrong against his own brother. There is an importance why God does this thing. There is an import, There is a reason why God does this thing. Because there is a covenant that is about to come into people's life that is a brotherly covenant. If you turn your book to any letter in the New Testament, any letter in the New Testament, what does it start with, brethren? Every letter in the New Testament, you see it, brothers and sisters in Christ. Brethren in Christ. There is a brotherly responsibility that God is giving us and a brotherly responsibility God has given us from the beginning. He wants us to be responsible as brothers. This is something very important when we are running the show, when we are leading our life. We throw stones at people not recognizing that very stone is hitting your brother. What you think is not no harm, you are harming your own brother. You know, there may be thousand things that are good about that person, that one wrong thing that you may have seen, that is the one thing we are sticking to. 
We may have a thousand and one faults with each other. Let us not fight and focus on faults and the weaknesses of people. Let us embrace the strengths of each other. Let us walk in that unity, that bond that God has created for us to be the brethren. God wants us to conduct our life as, as brothers. You know, we have this saying, the blood is thicker. You know what is thicker than the blood? The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus is thicker than any other blood that is there. You and me can walk in the power of that blood that twines us together as brothers and sisters. And we shoulder each other as brothers and sisters. I am not here to tell you that there is no problem with your brother. I'm not here to tell you I have no issues with me. You got to love me as your brother. I'm not saying that I have million and one issues, but better be careful before you cast your stone. Before you do something against that person, you got to be very watchful about that. Whether you are saying it in a personal level or whether you are saying it in a public level, you got to be very careful. Our job as brethren is for us to uplift each other because that is what God is going to account us for. What did you do to your brother? Did you pull the brother down or did you lift your brother up? That's what Cain was asked. Cain was asked that one simple question. Where is your brother? Now, he would, he'll be asking the same question to us. Where is your brother? In our mind, in our thought process, in our ideas, what are we thinking about our brother, about our sister in Christ? How are we thinking about them? Are we thinking they are full of flaws? Are we thinking about them as full of God's love? Are we looking at them as weak people or are we trying to look at them with the power and the strength of God? It is important. This is a pre precept or a principle that God has laid from the foundations of the world that is important for us to conduct our life as God has designed. As God have established for us. He needed that. If, uh, if Abel and Cain have dwelt together. The course would have been totally different. You know remember accidents doesn't happen because of one time. We, when we become. When it's something becomes a habit. You know, somebody who, 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 who drives past the stoplight, if that is a habit for them, there is a day they are going to have an accident. They ha may have missed it nine times, but there is a tenth time that he would be killing somebody. So the same thing is true here. Many wrongs have happened, not just what has happened with Adam and Eve for them to be walking away from God. This is the walk away journey that, that, that was started. Adam and Eve sinned. Then comes Abel and Cain. And the Cain killed Abel. Who was supposed to be the responsible brother. Who was supposed to be taking care. He is the elder brother. Taking care of the younger brother. But what, what got there? Jealousy took over. Jealousy took over. This brother. God have accepted Abel's offering. And not Cain's offering. Can you believe that? They're fighting about offering. But anyway, there, if you look at that, uh, uh, why was God blessing that person? Why is not blessing me? There is always something we can learn from this lesson here. In within the brotherhood, I've seen so many people cast stones at the people that may have been preaching. You know, I have seen this so much in the church. They cast stones at the other preachers, other churches, other things, other stuff like that. I'm like, no, we need to stop. Is Jesus a Catholic? Then we are a Catholic. Is Jesus a prote Protestant? 
then we are. Is Jesus a Baptist? Then we are. If Jesus is a Methodist, then we are. Yes, he is. Anybody who calls upon his name, it doesn't matter whether he is Baptist or Catholic or, or Methodist. It doesn't matter to him. He only looks for somebody who is calling upon him. If he is responding to them, why in the world we hate them? Oh, those are Pentecostal people. Oh, those are Catholics. Oh, those are this, those are that. No, we need to stop discriminating each other. We are one body. We are one for each other. We need to stand for each other. We are missing a great opportunity to enjoy the full benefits of walking in this brotherly anointing. I'm going to give you another example here. Remember when Jesus was sending his disciples while he was on this earth. Remember how did he send them? By twos. By twos. Two brothers were sent out. Two brothers was sent out. The cord of two. They are going in that agreement, in that power of two. When they are going with that brotherly anointing with their lives, in their lives, they were able to see great things happen in their lives. That is the same power God has given. Jesus said, when two or three, when you agree, touch in agreement, when you come into that agreement, there is this brotherly covenant that we are activating, that we are enforcing, and that is allowing the power of God to flow through us, flow for us, and make the difference that we need. When we can operate in this brotherly anointing, brotherly position, brotherly responsibility, we are blocking the anointing of God to be working in our lives. Guess what? There is a no, no another way for it. With God, one and done. You do it this way or no other way. With God, there are no excuses. He wants us to be walking like that. Remember the same thing he says, if you are have anything against your brother, forgive them. Throw your offering. Throw, walk away from, the, from, this, uh, from this altar. I can't do anything to you. First make peace with your brother. First go make peace with your brother. It is so important that we walk in that unity, then that connection so God's power can flow. Everybody here can say, I can tell a thousand faults with me. The same thing is true about you. I can see a thousand faults with you. But that's not the business we are in. That's not the business we are in. We are in the business of standing with each other. Not fighting against each other. If, if, if only Cain have humbled himself and come to a place, Abel, how did you do that God have accepted your offering? Let me learn. If only. If only, my brother, you were able to go that far. You were able to attain this thing. How did you do it? If only they can do that. If only we can come to a place of understanding the brotherly anointing and coming into that partnership, coming into that one accord where we can see the same things that may have happened to the other people that have been blessed by God, we can have that happen in our lives also. There is no need for us to be jealous of anybody. There is no need for us to be upset about each other. You're my brother, man. You're my brother. You're my sister. I don't need to be upset. I don't need to be bitter about you. I don't need to be hating you. Yeah, we may have issues. Let's resolve it. Let's hash it out. You know, I like it. When, when we were young, me and my brother, we fought it till we bled. But next thing you know, we were distributing our fruits with each other, sitting next to each other and eating it. We were over it. We still continue that pact of being brothers. So this is what we are missing. We, are, we may have a mi misunderstanding of each other. We may not understand each other. Let's talk. Let's discuss. Let's get over it. You have to yell at me, go do it. I have to yell at you, let's do it. But let's get back 
being brothers. The brotherly anointing is so important. Now go with me to the book of Mark, third chapter, 31 through 35. The gospel according to Mark, third chapter. Starting from 31st verse. This is when Jesus was preaching. Then his brothers and his mother came, standing outside. They sent to him, calling him. And a multitude was sitting around him, and they said to him, Look, your mother and your brothers are outside seeking you. But Jesus answered them, saying, Who is my mother or my brothers? That was one of the, call it philosophical question, or arrogant question, or an enlightenment question. But for me, I look at this as an enlightenment question. God is, Jesus is trying to get us to an understanding, to a point where we can understand what it is having that family, having that brotherhood, what it is. Then he looked around in us in a circle at those who sat around him and said, here are my mother and my brothers. And then he explains, for whoever, look at that. I like this clause so much. Whoever, whosoever, it doesn't matter where they are coming from, male, female, uh, brown, black, white, it doesn't matter. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and my sister and mother. The one thing, one, one thing only God is calling us to walk in this family, in this brotherly anointing, in this brotherhood that God has established for us even before the foundations of the world is that we be the people who do the will of God. And in through doing the will of God, we become family, we become brethren, we become those people that we can stand with each other. If you profess yourself to be a believer, if you profess yourself to be a Christian, that you are doing the will of God and you are willing to throw the stone at someone else that is of the same blood, no, you ain't. No, you're not. I'm sorry to be blunt, but that is the truth. We need to learn. There was a time in my life, this was my early ministry. This is where God was teaching me how to walk in this brotherly love. This minister literally have abused me so much in a way. In many ways. But there was a time somebody was trying to call me. One of my friends that I know, he was getting ready to call me to talk about this minister. And I knew that he was going to talk bad things about him that will sound so good in my ear. It will sound so good in my ear because I, I, I know this guy have done wrong to me. This, have, this guy have done bad things to me. I want to see people hating him. Let's be honest, we all do that. We all do that. We want to hear the downfall of other person because that person have abused us. Or that person, person may have done wrong to us. We want to hear that. But here, God, there, God was telling me, you are walking out of my covenantial provision. Yeah, even though as young as I was as a Christian, I had enough sense to recognize that God's voice got God's direction. And I told this person, you don't have to call me if you're going to talk, talk about that person. You don't have to. I never called that person again. But my flesh, oh, why not you just find out? It's just casual. You're just finding out. No, you're not. You're just trying to pander to your flesh. You just are trying to increase your hatred toward other person. This in no way I'm trying to say that person did not do wrong. But I am not going to be the person who picks the stone. I am not going to be that person who picks the stone to fight against this person. I better not be. 
This is what God is trying to encourage us. This is what Jesus was trying to get us into. This is your brother. This is your sister. Try not to cast your stone at this person. If you have to correct, like I said, God gives that freedom. Do the godly correction in love. We have an opportunity. God gave a platform where we can do that. Oh, well, they are not listening to me. That's fine, too. Let them be. Don't cast the stones. This is something we have to learn. This is one of the reasons, even though as mighty as the body of Christ is right now, we don't have one voice. We don't have one voice. We don't have one belief system. We don't agree with each other. We don't try to walk as one unit. When we don't try to walk as one unit, house divided can never succeed. Can never succeed. We need to understand that idea. You know, you may not agree with their philosophy. You may not agree with their theology. That's not what I am talking about. I'm talking about let's law walk in brotherly love. When was the last time you agreed with everything your sibling have done? Still, he and she, they are still your siblings, isn't it? Let's give the same courtesy to others. There is that one point we have to understand. And the other thing also, when we da start doing those kinds of things for the body of Christ in between, between that brotherhood, what happens is we will also get brotherly comfort. God will provide for us a comfort that your own family member may not be able to provide for you. God is always willing to give us that comfort through a brother whom you may never meet again. But God is going to bring that comfort to you. If we can walk in brotherly responsibility, we can also reap the brotherly comfort. I may not have my brother on my side right now, but I have these people, you people around me, I consider as my family. I embrace as my family, as the family of the body of Christ. And when I do that, when I move toward all of us in that responsibility, God is also bringing comfort into my life. As that. Jesus have come to a place where he have eliminated the human content there and he was walking everything in the spiritual context. And that's the reason when he was on the cross, he even fulfills those things. Behold, he looks at John and says, John, this is your mom. And he looks at John, he looks at Mary and says, Mary, this is your son. He's bringing them into the kingdom connections rather than just being stuck in the blood connections. What we may have missed in the blood family, God is willing to provide us in the blood of Christ family. But we got to walk in the brotherly responsibility. We got to be able to put ourselves there, walking in the brotherly responsibility, and have that opening, have that mindset where we can also receive and reap the comfort of brotherhood. God is willing, always willing to give that comfort to us. Jesus changes the picture so much when he goes to the cross. John 20, go, go with me to John 20, starting from 11th verse. John 20, starting from 11th verse. But Mary stood outside. This is after Jesus was crucified and buried. But Mary stood outside by the tomb weeping. And as she wept, she stooped down and looked in the t into the tomb. And he, she saw two angels in white sitting, one at the head and the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had lain. Then they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, because they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. Now when she, she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. Did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, woman, why are you weeping? 
whom are you seeing seeking she supposed she supposing him to be the gardener and said to him sir if you have carried him away tell me where you have laid him and i will take him away jesus said to her mary all he said was mary she turned and said to him rabuni which is to say teacher she recognized she recognized him and then jesus said to her do not cling to me for i have not yet ascended to my father but go to my brethren look at this the instruction that he gives go to my brethren that is the first ever message that was ever preached of resurrection was to the brethren go to my brethren and say to them i am ascending to my father look at this he doesn't stop there and your father to my god and your god now what is jesus doing he is bringing us into that brotherly covenant where he is putting us equal to him he is sharing his position with us remember god said this is my only begotten son only begotten son whereas jesus now says my father your father my god your god he is giving his rightful place to us to come into the kingdom into the throne room of grace as his daughters as his sons as the brothers of jesus christ am i you might look at me and say i am being very rude if i were to say there is no difference between you and jesus that not because you are good but because what jesus gave you jesus brought us to that place that they are this this is my brother this is my sister the same thing i am trying to encourage us the way jesus gave us that elevation that jesus gave us that position jesus gave us that qualification the same way he did it to us let us also do it for our brothers this is my brother this is my sister i cannot throw the stone at him i cannot speak evil of him i cannot speak evil of this my sister i cannot and i will not may this be our covenant may this be our commitment that where we can say no enough the brethren the accuser of brethren the devil is always trying to egg into your head look look at that person that one mistake that he is doing look 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 they are falling short there look 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 they are weak in this area look did you see that person did you see how he talks did you see how she dresses did you see that did you see the nitpicky things he wants you to keep looking at looking at looking at so you can walk away from this brotherly favor he don't want us to live in that brotherly unity before i can pick a fight with you i want to see how strong is my brotherly unity with you how far i can take your insult in my life may we all raise our standards as brothers and sisters may we all be thick skinned where we can you know we don't do that you know we when we is with our blood family and you know, oh that that he is like that he's a, he's an idiot he's like that but with our brothers we just say he's an idiot but he still is my brother he still is my brother he does those those idiotic things from time and time again but he's my brother we can do the same grace to the body of we can give the same grace it's not that we can we choose not to we choose not to because we don't see a brotherly responsibility there in the body of christ we do have a brotherly responsibility and now the last thing uh, um, if we go matthew 5 5th chapter starting at 22nd verse matthew I'm going to end it here. Matthew 5:22. 
This is where Jesus gives a wonderful statement. But I say to you that whoever, here also he doesn't give any qualifications. He says whoever is angry with his brother, with his brother without a cause, shall be in danger of judgment. Whoever, it doesn't matter who you are, whoever, you might say you don't know what that person done, what this is, what that is. He says, whoever shall be in danger of judgment. And whoever says to his brother, Raka, the word Raka means fool. Whoever says to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the council. You are endangering yourself. We are endangering ourselves by doing that. Shall be in the danger of counsel. But whoever says you fool. Shall be in danger of hell fire. Shall be in the danger of hell fire. We didn't go kill them. We didn't go destroy them. We didn't take a sword against them. All we did was we said. All we did was we said. What we say about our brothers are very important. How we stand with them. How we sit with them. How we agree with them. How we disagree with them. How we give, come into a place where we can say, this, this, is, not, this is not a good place. This is not, not good for me. You know, there is a, an area where we can live with a brotherly conflict. Where we can honestly and truthfully come to people and talk about it. Talk about those things with brothers and sisters. Hey, that I have seen you do this. This doesn't seem right. What do you think? Having a discussion. Not a judgment. A discussion. If we judge, we will be judged. Remember that. If we judge, we will be judged. The same measure with which we are judging others, we will be judged also. I'd rather be in a place where I can freely give the grace that God has given to me. Rather than being stuck in that situation where I am hating my brother or my sister. Because God didn't design us to be so. There are three things that I want us to think about as we talk about these brotherly things, brotherly call. The title of my message was this, Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? There's a movie, Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? But I just want us to think about this thing, Oh Brother, Where Are You? I'm calling it for myself, Oh Brother, Where Are You? I'm full of weaknesses, I'm full of frailties, I'm full of shortcomings, but I still need you, my brother. I still need you, my sister. This is the heartfelt call from me, calling for somebody to stand with me as my brother. The world is doing enough of damage to me. They are throwing rocks at me. They're trying to destroy me. They're trying to pull me down. They're trying to point my faults and failures. I'm tired of that. May we be that group. May we be that person that we can, we can raise to a next level where we can stand as a comfort for brothers. Where we can take, it is my responsibility to stand with my brother. When my brother and my sister are going through fire or rain or anything like that, it is my responsibility to stand with them. I cannot delight in their failure. I cannot. It is my responsibility to stand with my brother. We all have brotherly responsibility. We all have brotherly responsibility. When we can assume the brotherly responsibility, you can gain the right to give brotherly rebuke. But it is the opposite. We always want to give the rebuke 
before we assume the responsibility we need to assume the responsibility first we need to assume the responsibility first brotherly responsibility once we do the brotherly responsibility we have access to brotherly rebuke if we can walk in all those things when i am rebuking somebody when i am bringing somebody to a correction to somebody i should be coming to you as a brother brother not as somebody who judges you not as somebody who is trying to tear you apart the world is doing enough of that for us don't you agree the looks the words the voices you know when you are walking into the room there are so many eyes that are looking at you you can feel them there are so many voices that are trying to pull you down that are there all around us let me not be those people you know the saying we have that in that uh, a play where they say you too brutus i'm not sure if you ever read this shakespeare now where he says there is a there is a, a, a king who is getting dethroned the, his one faithful servant also stabs him that is what killed him and then he says you too brutus this is where we have become the body of christ you too brutus we are trying to kill our own brother may we all awaken ourselves instead of pulling people down instead of trying to drive somebody to the ground let us stand with them in their weaknesses in their failures in their comfort when you don't assume the responsibility you do not have the right to rebuke but if you do both of them you also can attain the brotherly comfort there is a brotherly comfort god is always willing to bring into our life don't reject it don't reject it because god is wanting to show his faithfulness the power of his covenant his principle how it works if you have been a brother to somebody there is a brotherly comfort that is coming to you and i love you all as my brothers and my sisters in the body of christ and i receive the same thing from you all we all let us walk in that one unity not that i am perfect not that you are perfect we all have issues we all fall short of god's glory let us not worry about that one black speck that we might have let us focus on what is the good goodness of god's love that is working in us and working for us may we all increase in this brotherly love being conscious of this and being strong in the brotherly love filia I want us to grow in it. I don't know about you. I believe this hour de- desires and dictates more of such love than ever before. Don't you agree? Things are falling apart. Everybody is on for their own. Let me not be that group where we fight against each other but for each other. Amen. Let us also partake in our communion as we end this service. As this is the beginning of our month, we partake in this communion, believing and giving God the permission and giving God the glory. God, I need you in my month. Thank you for being with me in the month of October. Leading me, many of us have gone through so many things. Many of us have gone through ups and downs. peaks and valleys yet we are still here i am so thankful i can still be here now i want to partake in this thing this confession is one of the signs of brotherhood this is my body that i broke we are the body of christ amen We are the body of Christ as we partake in this communion never forget we have a brotherly responsibility never ever forget that we have that brotherly accord that we have toward each other 
Let us walk in it. Let us live in it. Let us be strong in it. And then he gave us this covenant. The blood that was shed. This is the new covenant in which he came. He brought us to a place where we can say, my father. Jesus transformed everything. He is no longer Jesus' father. He is our father. My father and your father. My father and your father. This is the communion. This is the covenant, the profession of God. You know, I want us to remember this thing go boldly during the month of November. You know why? Because your God is with you. He said he will never leave us, nor forsake us. This is the boldness in which we can walk. As we partake in this communion, you, cannot, you don't have to do it all alone. Let us do it with God. Let us do it with his covenant. With man it is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Pastor Warren has prophesied this week is going to be a blessing. It's a new thing. It's going to be a great thing coming into our lives. Let us bring God's covenant into the equation and that prophecy be fulfilled in our lives in the name of Jesus. Great things be happening in our lives. New things be happening in our lives. God be taking us to new horizons all for His glory. Spiritually, mentally, physically, financially, relationally. Something new, something supernatural. Believe in God of supernatural miracles. Supernatural manifestations. He's going to do that for us. All for your glory. All for your glory, Father. Let us partake in this. Father, in Jesus' name, we give thanks, Lord, for you love us and you care for us. We partake in this communion. With faith in you, Lord Jesus, that you gave your body for us, that you shed your blood for us. We walk in this covenant, believing for ourselves we shall not lack any good thing. We receive the plan of yours into our lives, into this. In every area of our life, God, seen and unseen, cover us individually and as a family as even as a church Father, we come into your covenantial provision lead us onto your fullness lead us onto your boldness lead us onto your manifestation your will be done in our lives as it is in heaven to him be all the glory and all the church said let us participate in this communion. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Let us all stand in his presence for a minute. Just give him thanks from the bottom of your heart. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for being with me. Thank you for being with us. In the shadows, in the darkness, in the pain, in the shame. Thank you for being with me in the light, in the glory, in the heights. Oh, we bless you, Lord. We honor you. We continue to believe that you will lead us onto your marvelous life, God. Lead us. Help us be responsible in each other's lives, God. That we can walk in this brotherly anointing and reap the brotherly com comfort, Lord. We bless you, we honor you, and we praise you. Your will be done in our lives as it is. Jesus name we pray and all the church said amen let us be born amen amen God bless you